And on this, I'm going to have mounted the Insta360 camera. I will take the lens condom off, so there's that. <laughs> Hello friends, welcome back to the channel. If you are new here, my name is Sarah and I make videos about health and fitness and all of those things, endurance sports. So if that's something that you're into, well, you can go down and find those buttons. I don't have a map for you today. I think you turn left at the bendy thingy and right on whatchamacallit street. I don't know, down below, you'll find them. But yesterday I finished my 100 mile ride. The ride for Roswell went well. For those of you who supported and donated, thank you so much, very generous. Went to a great cause, it was a good ride. But I filmed quite a bit of the process from setup all the way to the completion. So I'm gonna to put together a two part video series here that covers my setup and then a ride recap. And I'm starting today with the setup. So I'm gonna send things back to past me to cover my bike and nutrition setup, share it with you guys, in case you wanna borrow some of those ideas for your own epic 100 mile ride. So without any further ado, Let's send it back to pass me. Okay, so it's getting dark out. So before we run out of daylight, I do have to give this guy a bath, but I figured I'll do a quick run through of what I'm gonna be running tomorrow for the 100 mile ride. So you guys can see what I will be using. This thing is pretty heavy with all of the accoutrements on it. I think it's gonna be about 25 pounds. I've tested this a little bit over the last week, especially last week on a long ride. It's an absolute dog on the climbs, but it does very well for itself on flats. And over the course of the 100 miles, it's gonna be, I think 1700 feet of vertical gain so that's nothing so I'm not going to really be paying any kind of speed penalty based on the heavy bike here so I've tried to balance the best I can aerodynamics I didn't want a big windsock here obviously I've got a little bit of extras on here the idea is to bring everything with me so that I can ride through without stopping now it's going to be about 81 degrees I don't know what the heat index is going to be or the humidity on the day it is going to be mostly cloudy so it should be pretty decent conditions to get through, but if it's too hot and I'm sweating too much, I'll, I'll stop somewhere, maybe halfway or two thirds of the way through and refill my bottles. I'll take that as it comes on the day, but the idea or the goal is to go through, find a group that's gonna go from beginning to end without stopping at any of the rest stops. And I'm targeting somewhere around four and a half hours. I think that's reasonable, maybe even less, but I'd be happy with four and a half to five hours on tomorrow's ride. So let's start going from bottom to top, front to back, and I'll go through what I'm using. We'll start with the wheels here. I'm just using a pair of my training wheels. This is an aluminum set of wheels with a carbon fairing, so I still get an aerodynamic benefit, but I'm not putting my light carbon wheels at risk on unknown roads and with unknown people that if I do crash, I'm not gonna muck those up, so I'll be using these. I'll also have the aluminum braking surface here, which will give me a little extra confidence, you know, being able to have that stopping power with people I don't know very well. And before you give me a lecture about disc brakes, I understand I like using rim brakes for my use cases, a lot of my rides by myself. You know, they're just no muss, no fuss, easy to maintain. I don't have to worry about bleeding them, ch uh, changing pads out noise, all of that stuff. So I like having rim brake bikes. I think I will buy a disc brake bike in the future, but I do like the ability to have a training bike with some rim brakes on there. And in this area, we really don't need disc brakes and I don't really ride a lot in foul weather. So rim brakes are more than good enough for my case here. In terms of tires, I'm gonna be using the Continental GP5000. I absolutely love these tires. These are some of the fastest tires I've ever ridden on full stop. I've ridden on some racing tires that are not as fast as this. I think the Vittoria Corsas that I use, the graphene tires, they are faster than these a little bit, but they're not nearly as durable. They wear out a lot quicker and they are more subject to a flat tire. They're basically race only tires. These are all year round. I can use these to train. I will switch over to all season tires as weather gets a little bit more wet outside because it has a better tread pattern, gives you a little better grip but these are the best balance of speed and durability and comfort. They really feel nice to ride on. I love these tires. I've been riding them for about 14 months. I've gotten a total of two flat tires. One of them, I just hit a, a pothole really hard and got a bit of a pinch flat there. And then the other time I got some kind of staple that just happened to make its way through the tread there and get into the tube. I just changed these out this week so I can have a nice fresh pair to ride on, but they hold up pretty well. And I've actually kept the old two tires in, in case you know for spares in case one of these tires gets cut up i think that they're pretty affordable 
for what they are. They're not as expensive as a race tire and they're not much more expensive than just a standard tire. So I would recommend them if you're looking for a nice, fast, durable tire, GP 5000s. These are 28 millimeter. Uh, I prefer 28 mil to 32 mil. I find them to be the best balance of comfort and speed for me and my size and my riding. But you know, everybody has a different orientation that they like on their bike. I can't fit a 32 mil in here anyway. You can, you have to open up the lever and you have to kind of push these out a little bit. They're not a perfect fit into the standard brake caliper, but I can get them in and out without any major trouble. A 32 mil will not clear the brake caliper. So I really don't care for the 32 mils all that much. So I'm not going to buy new brake calipers to clear for a 32 mil tire, even though the frame does take them. But those are the tires I'm going to be running. Moving on up, I just have a GoPro here mounted underneath on a stem mount here. I like the stem mount quite a bit, actually. This is something that I use for my Kygo light uh, headlight here as well when it starts to get a little bit darker out. It mounts up real nice, clears the bottom of the frame. I can angle it very nicely. So I really like this. This is very inexpensive as well. I'll link this in some of the other things in the show notes down below in case you're interested. So moving on up here, I am going to be running some aero bars on here. The purpose of those is I'm not sure if I'm going to end up being isolated. Typically they start everybody together, a couple hundred riders, but they had to put people out in phases because it was uncertain as to the COVID restrictions when they started uh, hosting on the website for sign up. I'm probably only going to be starting with 50 or 60 riders. I don't know how I'm going to stack up against those riders. Am I gonna be faster? Am I gonna be slower? I don't know. So if I am going to be on my own, I may as well take the speed benefit of the aero bars and have them available. I won't be paying too much of a penalty having them on the front end. Again, mostly being flat, the extra weight penalty is not going to bother me all that much to have them there. But these are the profile design clip-on bars. Pretty much they're middle of the road. I like the hockey stick kind of design. I angle them a little bit inward so my hands are closer together and I get them mounted uh, right on either Either side of the stem but I find these to be extremely comfortable I'm very comfortable in the uh, the arrow position and please don't mind the cicadas that are just being absolutely obnoxious right now next to that I'm going to have the motorcycle mount here for my camera this thing is fantastic this is rock solid I can ride this bike over freeze cracks expansion joints janky old railroad tracks this thing doesn't budge it's got a nice friction arm type of technology attached to it so I can angle things so I will have the uh, the extension pole or the selfie stick whatever you want to call this thing attached to it and i can orient it whatever way i want and then i'm going to have the insta 360 attached to it and both of these cameras that i have are able to actuate in the off position so i have the settings to where i want them and all i have to do is press the record button on either one of these cameras and it will start recording until i tell them to stop i won't be really futzing with the screen or settings all i want to do is press the button and capture something because the priority is to stay upright and stay safe and not put anybody else at risk so if i can hit that button real quick i can do that pretty safely and pretty uh, pretty aptly Next up, I'm gonna be using the Garmin Edge 1030. This is the standard computer that I use. It's got good navigation. I did put the route on this, uh, this head unit here. It is a new route to me, so I'm, we're gonna be completely unfamiliar with it. Nobody's done this route before unless they've pre-ridden the course. So I did a little bit of studying, but I do have the navigation set up here so that I feel confident with all the turns being put in there. I downloaded it right from the website. They had a GPX file available. I put it right on the Garmin. I made sure it's there, so I'll be all set for tomorrow. Next up, I've got Ducky. There he is. He's just going to go for a ride with me. He's got his helmet on. He's nice and safe to go. I just thought he was fun. So I'm going to ride with Ducky. He's going to be right here. He makes me laugh, especially when I go to that dark place, you know, as we get closer to the 100 mile mark. I mean, come on, that's hilarious. <laughs> All right, moving on back, we go to the frame. So here on top, I've got the Fuel Belt Aero Frame Bag, pretty much like a bento box. It's an aero bag, again, trying to get a little bit of that aerodynamic benefit instead of having something like a handlebar bag, but I gotta be a little bit more tight with what's in here. So up in the top here, I'm gonna have uh, six of these which are the Cliff Mocha Shot Gels. Uh, I got a couple masks in there that just live in there just in case we go back into COVID restrictions and stopping at gas stations and so on and so forth. And then under that, I do have a package of Cliff Blocks. I'm not gonna open this whole thing up, but basically I've got about 800 calories in here. I, I probably won't go through them all. I'm gonna have calories elsewhere, but I like having this on top. It's easily accessible and no real aerodynamic penalty, but 800 calories being right here, that's quite a bit of food that I can uh, kind of cram into this tiny little bag up here. Moving on down, I'm gonna have my two bottle cages. So I'm gonna run, actually, all my bottles are going to be the Camelback 
podium ice, so they are insulated bottles. So they do hold uh, liquid to be pretty cold if you have ice in them. They're basically like a cooler. They do pretty well. So this first bottle here, I'm actually going to have some of this beta fuel in there. And uh, the beta fuel is 320 calories and 80 grams of carbohydrate. So it's a pretty good mix. And I'm gonna have this with some ice in there. And I think that's going to carry me through about the first hour because I don't see that I'm gonna be wanting to eat a whole ton in hour one. So I'm gonna fuel before the ride with probably some oatmeal and maybe some bananas. But I'm not gonna to wanna to really eat some of this race or ride nutrition in the first hour. So if I could just make sure that I sip at this bottle here, I've got a good uh, carbohydrate profile and decent caloric profile in this drink. So I'll have this in the bottle here, and then I'll have another bottle behind it. That's gonna be partially frozen, and that's going to just have standard Gatorade. So that's gonna be about 250 calories and about 60 grams of carbs in that bottle there. Right here on the left-hand side of the bike, I'm gonna have a frame-mounted um, hand pump here. The reason I have that mounted to the frame instead of in my saddlebag, you'll see in a minute the orientation I had to use for a, a third-mounted uh, bottle cage. It, it required me to take this frame pump or this hand pump out of the saddlebag and put it on the frame. And the reason I'm putting it on the seat tube rather than the down tube is because I use this bottle primarily so I pull this out from both the drive side and the non-drive side, and I didn't want to accidentally knock this out, so I put it on the non-drive side on the seat tube, so it's not going to take the same wear and tear, because as I exhaust this bottle, it's just going to get rotated back, and my primary bottle is going to come forward. Uh, in terms of gearing, I'm just going to be using compact gearing, which is what I use pretty standard on my everyday bike here. So it's 5034 Shimano Dura Ace. It is DI2. Uh, so this is what I've been riding for quite some time now. I like it. It's a pretty good gear profile and it's going to be more than what I need for a group ride of this magnitude. I'll be running the Garmin Rally power meter pedals here. And then moving on back, we've got, this is the Topeak uh, Aero bag. This is the small version of the bag. I usually run the medium, but because of this here rear mounted or saddle mounted bottle cage here, I can't use that big giant bag. It ends up being too large and it's going to cause some friction with the wheel back here with all the stuff packed into it. So I had to start to unpack some of that stuff like the hand pump down here so that I could accommodate this smaller bag. So inside of this bag, I have one tube, a pair of tire levers, and I have a CO2 actuator as well. But that's pretty much all that fits in this tiny little bag here. And I do have it kind of mounted a little bit more down the seat tube than I would like, but it will accommodate this other setup up here. So you can see I've got a tube tucked in here. I've got a CO2 cartridge threaded into this, uh, this seat mount or the saddle mount here, one on each side. And then I have a gorilla cage here. These things are rock solid. I love these things. Nothing comes out of them. For the insulated bottles that I use, the podium bottles, this is rock solid. If you have a smaller bottle, they have an XT, which is a little bit tighter, but these things do not lose bottles at all. I love them. They're a little bit pricey, but they are well worth the cost. They're also great to use on your frame as well. This is just a standard bottle cage, but it's ideal for something like a saddle mounted uh, bottle cage here. And then in the back, I'm just going to be using my 1128 cassette there. He needs a little bit of a bath, but pretty standard gearing for what I'm gonna be using. I'm not going to run out of gears on a group ride of this magnitude, but that's pretty much it for the bike. I decided to go with my more endurance geometry bike because I was looking for comfort here. I have an aero bike, which might be a little bit more aerodynamic for a long ride, but I didn't want to sacrifice the more comfortable slack geometry so I could be a little bit more upright, even in the aero position. And you know, that's, that's what I decided to go with. And I think it's going to be the right move. Uh, the saddle I'm using, I've done a review on this in the past. I love this saddle. I've been using it for about two years. This is the Specialized Power Mimic saddle, uh, the S-Works version. It is a great saddle. I really do like it quite a bit. I will link the review that I did in the show notes down below as well if you're interested. Women-specific saddle, but men love it too. And I think they've come up with some different shapes of this saddle with the Mimic technology as well. So I will link that down below. Now, in terms of extra nutrition, 
I'm gonna have 800 calories here, and I'm going to have about 820 calories in my bottles for liquid nutrition, so that's about 1,600 calories, and I wanna bring a little bit more on board, so I'm gonna have some stuff in my pockets here. So I'm gonna have a couple more gels tucked in the pocket, just for you know reaching with a different arm here. So two more of these Cliff um, gels here. The reason I'm using these mocha gels of all the same flavors because I tend to really dislike fruit flavored gels when they start to get warm. These are gonna start to heat up in the bag and in my pocket and they just, they sour to me when they are, when they're hot. I don't mind the more rich flavors when they get warmer. So I'm going to risk a little palate fatigue in return for something that I will actually take in. They do have 50 grams of caffeine in them, so I'll be taking in a steady stream of caffeine throughout the ride, that's okay. I have a couple more packages of these blocks. I've got some wild cherry in the top two bag, and then I have a margarita flavored and an orange flavored just for some uh, different flavors to maybe offset some of that palate fatigue and if I want something uh, to chew on. Here I have another, you know, random set of uh, pink lemonade uh, flavored chews here. And then if I'm looking for something not savory, but a little bit more like real food, I'm going to bring this little uh, fruit and nut bar here, this uh, Nature Valley pack bar. Pretty decent profile. I think this one here has, what, 25 grams of carbs in it and, you know, over 200 calories. So this is a, a pretty good amount of calories and nutrition in this. Uh, these Cliff Blocks here, 200 calories and I think 40, 40 grams of carbs in there. So pretty decent profile if I can take these in regularly. So I'm gonna have about 2,500 calories on my person. That's probably far more than I'm going to be able to take in. It's going to be less calories than I'm going to expend on the ride, but it's gonna be more than enough for me to stay upright and not bonk throughout the ride. If I can even get two thirds of this in, I'll be in pretty good shape. I think a lot of the focus is gonna be on the liquid nutrition because it's gonna be hot enough for me to continue to take that down. And as I said, if it gets hot, I'll have to stop and refuel and they have Gatorade on course. So I'll be in pretty good shape there. My shoes, these are the shoes I just run all the time. These are the Shimano S-Fire, um, the most recent edition of the, the RC9s or whatever the hell they are. I think these are great. They are a carbon sole with the Lokio uh, cleats on here. I like these quite a bit. They're nice and stiff good power transfer and pretty darn comfortable. The boas work pretty great. You know, they stay nice and tight for me. I'll be riding my Cast Pertone helmet here. I've got my number on there. And then I'll be wearing a pair of these Oakleys that are kind of like an in-between polarized lens. It's gonna be good for a cloudy day here. I didn't go frameless for tomorrow sunglasses. That's fine. These are pretty uh, wide lens here. This is going to be pretty decent for me to have a good field of view, so. I think these are a good choice for tomorrow's ride, but that's pretty much it. That's my setup. So I'm gonna get this thing washed up and get some final things put together and I'll log back in tomorrow morning. Thanks a lot, past me. Well, I need to go ahead and tend to my grain silos here and ride back home on this very humid day that continues to fog up both my sunglasses and the GoPro lens. But I hope you guys got some value out of this video. If you did, if you wouldn't mind hitting that thumbs up button, it really does help the video and the channel out quite a bit. Subscribe if you haven't already. Again, thank you guys so much for your words of encouragement, support, and for those of you who donated to this fantastic cause. I will be putting together the recap video in the next several days here. And as always, I will catch you in the next one. See ya. Thank you.